Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome to the Mental Wellness Wake Up Show, a weekly podcast where growth minded, creative people come to learn best practices from both spirituality and psychology that create lasting well being. I am your host, mental wellness expert, improvised acting teacher, therapist, and coach, Dawn McMillan. Let's get to it. So, I'm recording this using my computer's microphone. I'm uh, slightly agitated at the moment. It's been about an hour of adventures in uh, wanting and trying to get the dog to settle down so I can even sort of do an episode. And this reminded me of something that I have learned to be true. I uh, was working for the Pasquayaki tribe for a long time. And one of the tribal members was sharing with me that it's believed that the attitude you have when you're making food is imbued in the food and that someone would not receive or would not accept food from someone who was, you know, in a really bad mood. And then I think about my own life and decisions I've made that I have not really loved. And when I think about the frame of mind I was in when that decision happened, I was in some sort of elevated state. And I mean elevated, I was going to use the word of arousal, which in medical terms just means connotations around the word arousal that uh, are a little distracting, but either in some sort of fight, flight, or freeze, or some sort of anxiety, or some sort of depression, or insecurity at the time of decision-making has absolutely played out in the decision And I've noticed the opposite, that when I've gotten really calm and really centered, that the decisions that I make tend to produce more calm and more centering, more peace, more joy. This was kind of brought to my mind. I was listening to a podcast. I think it's called The Law of Attraction Explored with a guy named Grimes, Tim Grimes, The Law of Attraction Explored. And I like him because... Unlike a lot of other law of attraction teachers, the dog is fine. He just moans himself to sleep sometimes. Unlike a lot of other law of attraction teachers, he doesn't oversell it. You know, a lot of people will oversell the law of attraction. Like um, they'll say, oh, it's a law just like gravity. Um, gravity is a whole lot easier to work with and to prove. <laughs> you know, gravity is a little bit, a little bit clearer than the law of attraction. And I also would like to acknowledge that there are many, many, many influences on any given person at any given time. So I think a lot of the way that we think about the law of attraction is way too simple. That being said, he was talking about one of his favorite techniques, which is to be relaxed, to be relaxed. Um, If you've ever studied Neville Goddard or some of the 20th century, some of the 20th century law of attraction teachers they always talk about um, getting into peace. You know, in religious communities, they talk about um, the peace that surpasses understanding, that in the silence, you connect to your higher self. I think one of the reasons meditation can be so helpful is that when you surrender to the meditative process, you're not hyperactive, you're not anxious, you're not insecure, you're not uh, depressed, you're not angry, you are in the stillness of your being, and your thoughts and feelings are just sort of floating by. And in that space of being still, of being calm, of being at peace, of being in oneness, you, I, me, we, us, make better decisions. So what does this have to do with anything? I'm making a decision right now. This is all about me. Um, I'm making a decision right now and it's, it's kind of a big one. So it reminded me of some other periods in my life that were tumultuous. And I wanted to share with you a technique that really was transformational for me at the time. So once upon a time, I was married and my dad was alive. Those two things stopped being true in a span of about 90 days. (laughs) <laughs> marriage split up um and my father passed away so it was kind of a kind of an interesting time to be me and so right after that i was studying my spiritual techniques i was getting really really introspective about what i wanted to create the next chapter of my life as who do i want to be what do i want my life to look like 
And here's one of my bones with the law of attraction. So most teachers will tell you that you have to get super duper specific in order for the law of attraction to work in order to get what you want. And that definitely can be very helpful. The talk really is okay, I promise you. That what has been true for me is that when I get really super specific about what it is that I want, that is often not coming from a healthy, whole, peaceful, beautiful place. That can be coming from an insecure place. That can be coming from an ego place, from a trying to impress someone place, from a trying to fit into societal norms kind of place, because it was not coming from the center of my being. So what to do about that? Get centered, get grounded, get peaceful, get relaxed. Here's a fun fact. You cannot stress out. You cannot have anxiety in a relaxed muscle body. You relax your body, the brain has to follow. Relax the body and the spirit has freedom to tell you, show you, connect to what is most true for you. Once upon a time, when I went through a huge upheaval, upheaval in my life, the technique that I used was to combine questions with affirmations. What you talking about, Dong? So there's a couple of systems for bringing change into your life. One is affirmations. And most of us by this time are familiar with that. And that's where you state in the present tense, in the positive, the thing that you wish to experience. I am whole, perfect, and complete, and my health is radiant. I am a millionaire. I am a millionaire. Uh, one of the reasons people complain about affirmations is because they say, you know, I tried it and nothing changed. So in response to that, uh, there was a movement, and Tony Robbins is one of the people who made this popular a while back, to ask questions. Our brains have a tendency to answer the questions that we ask. And if you check in with yourself, you notice the truth of that statement. If you ask yourself, oh my God, what is wrong with people? Your brain will answer that question. What's wrong with me? Your brain answers that question. Why doesn't anything ever go my way? Your brain answers that question. So for people who found that affirmations didn't really work, it became helpful to turn that into a question. To turn that into a question. Why does everything I do produce a profit? How is it that I got to be so how is it that I got to be so incredibly attractive or whatever it is that you're working on? So at this time of great upheaval in my life, what I came up with was the following. How did I get so lucky? I am in love with my life. Question, affirmation, question and affirmation. And I started using that as a chant. Um, I had joined a gym to get my head straight and I would just get on the treadmill and I would just chant in my head, not out loud because, you know, people stare at you funny. How did I get so lucky? I am in love with my life. How did I get so lucky? Oh, I'm in love with my life. How did I get so lucky? I am in love with my life. Now, one of the ways to zhuzh that up is to give a little pause between the question and the, and the affirmation. How did I get so lucky? And your brain's like, how did I get so lucky? Starts looking for evidence. And then you affirm that you are in fact lucky. I am in love with my life. So you will notice that's not terribly specific. And at that period of time when I was using that affirmation and, you know, I was good on, I was, you know, walking every time I'd walk somewhere. How did I get so lucky? I'm in love with my life while I'm showering. So many things happened that I would not have known that I didn't know. For example, one of my best friends from college was really good friends with someone he met in business school. I got to meet her. She and I hit it off. She's amazing. She invited me to join this mother's group. I joined this mother's group. I met some of my best friends in the town that I live in. My kids had a great time. I was not looking for a mother's group to join. If I had gone the more traditional way, 
or um, specific law of attraction way, that would have been off my radar. But how did I get so lucky? I am in love with my life, opened up this possibility where when my friend invited me to lunch and I met his friend and this whole thing unfolded, I really added people and situations where I was like, I am lucky. I am in love with my life. How did I get so lucky? I'm in love with my life. It dropped 40 pounds. You're like, but you were on the treadmill. That's why. But uh, yeah, you know, people work out all the time and don't change their bodies. So I think being open to that made a difference, made a difference in how I was eating. How did I get so lucky? I am in love with my life. Um, I figured out the next chapter of my life. I ended up going to graduate school. So I share this with you specifically because I suddenly remembered as I'm facing a decision right now, another time in which I used that very specific set of questions and affirmations. That worked out pretty well too. I quit my job without another job and ended up getting a better job for more money. How did I get so lucky? I am in love with my life. And so I want to offer that to you specifically for you to play with, for you to play with. If you have been using the law of attraction, you've been very specifically um, getting stuff, more power to you, keep at it. If there are things that you've been working on and it hasn't quite shown up for you, maybe try this method. And if you're not entirely sure what exactly it is that you want, wouldn't you love to feel like you are the luckiest person on the planet and that you are totally in love with your life, whatever that consists of? Sign me up. Sign me up. How did I get so lucky? I am in love with my life. And whenever I give myself like five minutes of just, how did I get so lucky? I am in love with my life. It changes my vibe. It changes my energy. I get this warm feeling around my heart and I get this sense of possibility in my brain and a relaxation in my body. And then if I get into problem solving, right? Like, so what do I want to do about X, Y, Z? From that expanded space, from that warm, joyful space, different possibilities sparkle, different possibilities stand out to me, new creative ideas show up. And or I just sort of trust that things are going to work out. And then I follow the sparkle. I follow the shine. I follow the joy. I follow the laughter. And if something shows up in my world and it pings me and I think that's cool, I lean into it. And it has been my experience that when I do that, when I get into an expanded, joyful, peaceful place, when I follow the sparkle, when I follow the shine, things work out. And I have people, places, and things show up for me that I didn't even know were possible. And if I had stuck to just asking for what I knew to be possible, I would have missed out on some magic, some absolute magic. So I submit this for your uh, consideration. See, try it out. Try it out for a week. See how you feel. And if you get nothing more than walking around with a little bounce in your step, because you're like, I'm in love with my life. Wouldn't that be okay too? And you know why you get to be in love with your life because you are amazing. I don't know how you don't just kiss yourself in the mirror all the time. You are amazing. You are whole. You are perfect. You are complete now in this moment, in every moment before and in every moment to come. And even so, you are free to change and you are free to be completely at peace with yourself. And you, my beloved human, are worthy and deserving of every beautiful, good, wonderful thing that life has to offer. Thank you for listening. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing the podcast with others. The more people who are in our community, the better everything gets. All right. Thanks for being here. Until next time.